Brian Ray, America's Rugby News, Major League Rugby 2023 preview, the New England Free Jacks. Well, what an exciting year at Fort Quincy, a Major League Rugby record for most consecutive victories, a record for most wins in the regular season, and it just didn't quite go all the way, came up against that very tough uh, New York side in the conference final. But hey, uh, first trip to the playoffs in their third season, uh, you couldn't really have asked too much more from this side. Scott Matthew uh, coming in as coach uh, last year, along with Mike Rogers and Matthew recently said that he thought his team was uh, were overachievers last year. Well, maybe that's an accurate uh, description, but they were so exciting. I mean, uh, Bodine Walker, of course, uh, the, the human highlight, real uh, MLR player, of the year. Just a tremendous season from him and uh, rightly rewarded with a big money deal to Japan. So uh, he is the first name we're going to be taking off this list. Uh, very sad uh, to see him go. Uh, Matthew and Rogers are back. They've got a new uh, assistant coach with them, William Webster, uh, and a lot to, to build on from last season, but also some players have left. So let's go through this and peel away the rest of those who have departed. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Walker. It was a pleasure watching you play. Uh, so Quentin Newcomer has has gone off to Old Glory DC, a pretty good uh, shift from him over three seasons with New England. Alex Johnston, the uh, brother of Joe, maybe not uh, quite the same impact uh, as Joe did. And so he is gone. Peter Jansen, unfortunately, had that bad knee injury towards the end of last uh, season, uh, missed that uh, playoff game. Uh, so he is left the team. Uh, he was excellent over his time uh, with New England. Uh, Stephen Hinshaw kind of returned to the squad uh, later in the season, only played in one game. He's not returning uh, this year. Eric de Jager, this uh, stalwart South African tight head prop, he's uh, gone off to France. Uh, he was a uh, pretty good, handy, maybe an underrated player. Uh, Spencer Kruger. Uh, they picked him up in the, uh, I think it was the very first collegiate draft, if I recall uh, correctly. Not returning next season. I know I thought he might uh, show up in Chicago, but we haven't seen that yet. So uh, hopefully he does return to MLR at some point. Uh, Stan Vandenhoven, a pretty significant loss. Another one who suffered a, a bad injury uh, playing in the NPC uh, during the offseason. So he is unfortunately gone uh, for the year. Not sure. Maybe he'll return in the future, but won't be around this season. They're six foot eight, uh, you know, line out tower so that's a significant loss uh, Javon Camp only played uh, one game uh, last season. He has gone to play with the Hunter Wildfires uh, in the Shoot Shield down in Australia. So some good experience uh, for him, youngster. Uh, certainly like to see him come back to MLR after that. Uh, Jesse Paretti, this uh, big abrasive uh, flanker slash lock came in from New Zealand. He was a lot of fun to watch, but he's not uh, returning this year. Uh, Justin Johnson, uh, we're going to take him off this list. He's not really gone. I mean, he's still in Boston, but he has a job uh, and he can't really train full time with the team. So that's why he really hasn't been getting the playing time that other people maybe have expected. So, you know, again, another guy we'd like to see a bit more of in MLR uh, if he can, you know, get back in the in the training thing. Um, uh, Terrell Paita, uh, you know, uh, had that personal uh, family tragedy, which was terrible uh, last season, but, you know, uh, really played a, a exceptionally well when he was around, but he is uh, understandably staying in New Zealand and not returning uh, this season. Slade McDowell unfortunately suffered the same fate as Van Den Hoven and had a bad injury uh, playing uh, in the NPC during the offseason, so he is not returning. He was outstanding at flanker uh, last season. Uh, so yeah, quite a few names have, have left in the forward pack. Now we'll turn to the backs. Uh, Sean Yakubian, he just uh, was blighted with injuries and uh, you know had another medical issue that kept him off the field uh, last season. So he's now gone to the Chicago Hounds. Hopefully he can uh, you know get a nice run of games with them because he's a better player uh, than we have seen uh, so far in MLR. Harrison Boyle. Uh, the very tall uh, fly half uh, played a bit of fullback as well. You know, he was a starter the first year he was with the team. He's staying in New Zealand, I believe, to complete his university studies. U.S. eligible. Um, hopefully we will see him uh, back in MLR. Uh, Mika Lamano, uh, I think he just played one game uh, last season. He was kind of with the team at the beginning of the season, left and then came back, but I think he's returned to uh, California now. 
Uh, and Jack Reeves, uh, this Canadian eligible centre who was playing so well with Gloucester, well, they decided to keep him. Thanks, Gloucester. But still Canadian eligible, so who knows? Uh, maybe selectors can convince him to turn out uh, for Canada, but not returning uh, to MLR this season. Anyways, Harry Barlow, this American eligible winger, uh, he has returned to England and he has joined the British Army. So maybe he'll turn out with the, the Army side. Still uh, US eligible. Uh, he did play for the Falcons, so he's uh, captor, captured, I guess you would say, uh, by the USA. Uh, Dougie Fife, a name, <laughs> another guy that, uh, you know, Fort Quincy did not want to see depart, but uh, you can't keep them all, right? Dougie Fife has uh, now gone to Nola Gold, so that'll be <laughs> conveniently the team that they're playing in the very first round, so that'll be uh, fun to see uh, Dougie playing. It'll be fun to see his reception when uh, he plays in the return match when they do go back to Fort Quincy. Uh, that'll be fun. And the others are all there. So, uh, yeah, about half the squad is gone, so another large turnover as far as players go. Uh, so that'll be, uh, you know, an interesting obstacle again to overcome uh, for Matthew and Rogers. Uh, so uh, that'll be interesting. So there we go. Uh, that's what's left from 22. Now we uh, look ahead to 2023. A lot of talent uh, leaving Fort Quincy, but a lot of talent coming in. So let's start in the front row. Uh, Kyle Sequeira is returning. He really had a breakthrough season last year. Well, he's got competition for that number one shirt this year in the form of Cole Keith, Canadian international, coming over from the uh, Toronto Arrows. Uh, Foster DeWitt, I had him uh, here at Hooker, but he also played loose head uh, prop a fair bit last season. Very handy player, so we'll slide him over. He's going to concentrate a little bit more uh, over there uh, this year. Mil Sanarivi returning. New hooker, Keanu Carreru Symes. He had captained the uh, New Zealand under 20 side. Very uh, handy pickup. Uh, played a little bit of a super rugby. Has a couple caps uh, there. So uh, a nice addition, you know, uh, replacing Peter Jansen in the squad. And another uh, coming over from the Toronto Arrows, Andrew Quatrin, the uh, first choice Canada uh, hooker. Uh, I mean, that's some impressive depth at hooker, you have to say. Uh, all of these guys competing for that starting role. Uh, Tavita Sole, the Tongan, returning at tight head prop. A newcomer in uh, from Hawks Bay. Uh, Carreiro Sines, by the way, also playing with Hawks Bay. So these guys have played together. Joel Hintz, uh, short, stocky, tight head. A little bit smaller maybe than your conventional tight head, but he was a, a champion power lifter uh, when he was a, a teenager. So he's certainly got a lot of strength. Also coming in at tight head prop, Connor Young, this uh, a new Canadian. Canadian international, uh, Australian, but Canadian eligible. That's why he won his, uh, his cap. He can also play on the loose head side. Uh, quite a, a skilled prop. Uh, he played a, spent a little bit of time in Scotland, played with the Scotland club side as well. So uh, decent player. And Ivan Pula, he's a central Washington guy. He uh, also toured at the USA Falcons at one point. Another guy, primarily a tight head, can also play loose head as well. So Front row looks pretty good. You'd have to say lots of coverage there. DeWitt can come in and play hooker as well. So uh, no complaints, really. I think that, that front row, uh, to me, looks stronger in depth than it did in 2022. Second row, Captain Josh Larson returning, Regan O'Gorman uh, returning, both of them Canadian internationals. Another Canadian international coming in, Connor Keyes from Rugby ATL. Did I mention that New England is Canada's honorary second team uh, this year? Uh, maybe we can call them New Canada instead of uh, New England. Uh, Samisi Paella, Tongan uh, international, uh, more of a, uh, I think you'd say, a, uh, kind of a replacement for Peretti in that he's a uh, uh, six foot four, so uh, he's more of a blindside slash lock as opposed to an out and out uh, second row. So we'll stick him in there. Uh, just a young guy, 23 uh, years old. I think he's only got, you know, three or four uh, Tongan caps. Uh, Cam Davidovitz uh, has really worked his way up through uh, kind of the club system and then the academy uh, program at, at New England and uh, has really earned his spot on the side, plays across the back row. A uh, hard-working guy, Vian Conradi, the Namibian international returning. Uh, Joe Johnston, of course, returning. Ethan Fryer, uh, this young Canada under 20. Uh, he's Well, he's American, born in the, uh, I think, Seattle area, uh, in Washington anyways, but uh, a Canada U20 uh, open side flanker. Uh, elevated to the senior squad this year. 
uh, Sam Fishley uh, coming in. This abrasive, uh, speaking of uh, abrasive Jesse Peretti, uh, uh, abrasive Sam Fishley coming in from Otago. Not as big as Peretti, uh, not as tall at least, uh, but definitely uh, very energetic. So he should be uh, fun to watch. And Mitch Jacobson, uh, you know, rugby fans might recognize the name Jacobson. His brother Luke played for the All Blacks. Well, Mitch also played for New Zealand under 20s. A uh, captain Waikato in the NPC. A very good signing there. I mean, if you're going to lose McDowell, you might as well bring someone in quality like that. Uh, that back row, that first choice uh, back row, Fishley, Conradi, Jacobson. I'm kind of spoiling that, that uh, Match 23 thing. That's pretty impressive. And Thomas Casares uh, coming in. Uh, Argentine uh, who is at Thomas Moore, but he is U.S. eligible, uh, which is pretty handy. Six foot four can also fill in in the second row uh, if required. So there's a forwards. Uh, in the backs, John Poland returning uh, at scrum half, holding Younger returning. Newcomer Kieran McClay, uh, who's down playing, I believe it was with, uh, I want to say Otago, uh, down in New Zealand. Um, He'll put uh, some pressure on John Poland for that uh, starting role, so a pretty handy uh, pick up there. Jason Potros, I mean, you can't replace Waka. I mean, that's that's obvious. But if you have to, uh, Patros is probably about as good or as close as you're going to get. Another outstanding uh, 10 coming in from New Zealand. This is his first overseas contract. That's interesting. Uh, but a very creative, uh, dynamic, attacking player. He played a lot of fullback as well, similar to uh, Mr. Waka. Uh, I think uh, I think Fort Quincy is going to enjoy him a lot this season. And you know, you got a pretty handy uh, guy in behind him as well, and maybe even competing. Uh, with Patros for that starting spot. Uh, Reese McDonald, who was actually the highest uh, scorer in the shoot shield uh, uh, down in Aust uh, Australia, originally from New Zealand though, so an excellent uh, goal kicker. Um, so yeah, that's two uh, pretty good uh, fly halves there. I mean, again, not the same star power quite as Waka, but uh, uh, that's about as good as you're gonna get uh, as far as replacement goes. Uh, down in the midfield, LaRue, Milan, and Wayne Vanderbank were outstanding last season. Uh, Milan earning his first uh, caps with Namibia in the off season. Well, they got a couple other guys coming in who are pretty decent as well. Another arrow, Spencer Jones. Uh, New England says thank you to Toronto. Uh, he can play fly half as well, so probably your Third choice, uh, 10, I think. Uh, primarily an inside center. Can also play 13, can also play 15. Very versatile player. Canadian international, very handy. And Ben Lesage, I mean, Canada's uh, vice captain. He was a starter with the LA Giltinis last year. Uh, I mean, that is a very impressive group of midfielders, you have to say. Any way you slice it, any configuration there is outstanding. So uh, really impressive depth in that midfield. Definitely superior to what they they had uh, last year, which is, you know, which is great. Um Paula Balacana uh, turned out to be a very handy pickup from the Houston Sabercats. Was excellent last year on the left wing. Uh, also, we're going to slide Isaac Olson. He is returning. We'll slide him uh, over there on the left side. Please, either side. Can also play in the midfield. Another Canadian. Um, Mitch Wilson. I had him listed at fullback uh, under Fife, but really he started on the right wing last year. Of course, he debuted with the Eagles uh, in the, the World Cup qualifiers. Playing as a fullback. That's where he's going to play uh, this season. And in behind him, you've got Willis Goodwin, who toured with the USA Falcons uh, to Montevideo, coming out of the Chicago Lions. This youngster, talented uh, fellow who can also play wing. Um, and then we've got Zach Bastra over here, uh, who has really turned out to be one of the steals of the, the draft from a couple years back. Very rapid guy. Uh, got an injury, unfortunately, uh, kind of in the second half of last season and missed a good chunk of the year. But, uh, you know, the selectors, USA selectors, certainly keeping an eye on him and hope for a, a, a full season out of him. But he's got competition for that number 14 shirt, and that is Taniela Filimone. Uh, he's played for... Uh, the uh, Tonga Sevens side uh, looks very quick. Played uh, down in the NPC as well, and uh, you know, not a huge guy, but he's got good size on him. Six one, two fifteen, two twenty ish. I mean, I guess that is pretty big for a winger, but it can also play uh, outside center as well. Brings a lot of pace. So looking uh, forward to seeing him in action. So there you go. Uh, there's our squad for 2023. Uh, no real uh, complaints. Um, you know, maybe nice to see another Jenny 
genuine uh, second row, seeing as Paya uh, is more of a, a six lock uh, swing man type. So maybe another lock would be nice. Uh, front row looks uh, terrific. Back row looks stacked. Half backs, no complaints there. Midfield, tremendous. Outside backs, it's a very good looking squad, let's be honest. So you're going from uh, a great squad in 2022 to a great squad again in, in 2023. You know, a couple uh, key guys have gone Waka, Vandenhoven, McDowell, but you've got some excellent talent coming in uh, to replace them. So I don't think, uh, you know, the fans are going to be too upset once they see their team in action. Okay, so uh, let's uh, take a look at what we can do with our match day 23. Okay, Free Jacks match day selections. Uh, how many imports are they allowed in their 23? Well, New England's number is 12, and that is the highest in MLR. And that uh, gives them a lot of versatility uh, when it comes down to uh, their selections. And I think, you know, one thing we'll see from New England is maybe a little bit more rotation than we'll see with, with other teams, just because of the uh, kind of depth of, of talent they do have available uh, to them at some positions. So, uh, let's kind of go through this. Well, loose head prop, we've got, you know, Kyle Sequera uh, re returning as the kind of incumbent starter, but I mean, you got Cole Keith, who has that international experience. I just think he probably edges that one in the end. And we'll throw Sequera uh, over here. We've also got Foster DeWitt, three internationals really competing. So we'll throw him uh, in, in there as well in the mix. Uh, at Hooker, we've got this newcomer, uh, Keanu Carreru Symes coming in. I mean, anytime you got a New Zealand under 20 captain, uh, he's probably pretty handy. And just with the, the experience and the talent that he's got, I think probably going to edge his way to that uh, starting role. But then you've got Mil Sanarivi and Andrew Quatran. I mean, these guys are, any of these guys are, are legitimate starters in MLR. So I, I think you, you don't spend two of your imports on that hooker spot. So we'll put uh, Quatran there if he starts. One of those guys is on the bench. Uh, at number three, uh, Joel Hintz, I think, is the most uh, experienced guy and the strongest, probably, uh, scrummager. So we're going to put him there uh, at number three. And then you've got Tavita Sole and Connor Young. Uh, but we're just going to wait because we're going to see our, uh, what our import situation is like here. Uh, Josh Larson, the captain, definitely coming in as your uh, number four, re well, returning. Uh, at number five, in place of Vandenhoven, who's gone, I think Connor Keyes. Uh, you know, there's going to be good competition to him, uh, Keyes, O'Gorman. Uh, Samisi Paea, but I just think Keys is the most experienced of that bunch uh, and also the biggest. Uh, so it's always handy to have uh, the big guys in there in the engine room. Back row, I kind of cheated and, and, and let this uh, cat out of the bag already. Sam Fishley, definitely your six. Mitch Jacobson, uh, your seven. Vian Conradi, your eight. Uh, that's an outstanding uh, back row. I guess if you have one complaint, is that you know there's no towering line out guy uh, among them, but uh, Jacobson can jump. Uh, he'll be okay. I'm not really too sure what uh, Fishley's. He's only about six two, so I'm not really sure what his uh, line out skills, skills are. So uh, maybe if you're looking at that forward pack, that's one criticism is. I mean, there's no Stan Vandenhoven. I mean, but you can't really, there's not too many 6'8 guys uh, hanging around, you know, that are free agents. So, uh, you know, maybe that's a uh, one kind of a weakness in, in this side, but I guess we'll see. They're just going to have to get smart uh, in the line out, uh, you know, and really use their timing and their accuracy, uh, you know. But that'll definitely be, I would think, if you're going to target uh, anything with New England, it's going to be you'll try and attack them at the line out. Um, okay, let's look at the backs. Uh, John Poland, uh, returning but he does have competition uh, for that spot this year in Kieran McClay so we're going to put both of them there because again you're probably not going to burn both of your uh, ideally uh, not burn two import slots at scrum half uh, so whichever one of them starts then you got Holden Younger uh, on the bench uh, your fly half is definitely uh, Potros who's come in uh, and then in their midfield we got uh, I probably I'm going to say uh, LaRue Milan probably just ahead of Vanderbank uh, and Lesage as well I mean you've got Vanderbank can play 12, he can play 13, he can play both of them. So, I mean, you could probably put him there, you can put him in the middle, I mean, starting either way. But we'll, we'll bracket him with Milan there. I think Lesage has to start just because he's he's such a quality guy and adds leadership as well. And of course, uh, being a domestic player, that's handy as well, gives you more options elsewhere. On the left wing, definitely Paul Mbalikana, uh, the Fijian. On the right wing, uh, you know, you got competition. You got Zach Bastre, you got Taniela Filimone. I think if you're going to bring in a guy like Filimone, though, I mean, he's probably going to be uh, working his way towards that starting role. So I'm going to stick him there for now. 
Mitch Wilson's your 15. All right, let's see how we're doing imports wise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're at 10, so we can get two more on the bench. Um, so our second rows, uh, we've got Paella and O'Gorman. I think uh, the handy thing about Samisi Paella is that he can play lock and uh, blindside flanker. And that's always nice to have that versatility on the bench. So we're going to stick him there at 19. And the back row, obviously, Joe Johnston is <laughs> he's not starting. Um, I mean, it starts him probably just about any other team in MLR. Uh, we're going to throw him there as our loose forward reserve. Now, it's interesting. You know, what would happen if, say, Vian Conradi was injured? You've got lots of flankers. You know, at, at number eight, though, um, I think maybe Cam Davidovitz. I mean, you can put Joe Johnston there. He can play eight. Uh, do you put Sam Fishley or Mitch Jacobs? And I kind of see them as out, out flankers. Um, and I kind of see Johnston there, but he has played a bit of eight. So maybe Johnston goes to eight or maybe Davidovitz come in but uh, I, if I had to guess Johnston to eight Davidovitz to the bench I mean you got Thomas Casarius as well uh, interesting to see how he comes along he's an actual genuine eight so and a big guy so you know maybe we'll see how he develops this year okay continuing on so we've got one more import slot left so uh, let's get Connor Young in here as our reserve tight head, and then uh, we got uh, you know we got Zach Bastry, we've got Spencer Jones, we got Reese McDonald. If you want a genuine, uh, you know, number ten experienced uh, reserve, you can put him there, and then bring Bastry in as your other uh, reserve. Um, but you know, if you want to uh, change things up a little, you can take McDonald out. You can put Spencer Jones in there because he can also fill in at 10. I mean, he's played 10 for Canada in, a, in tests before, so certainly not a new position uh, for him. And then that gives you a little bit more freedom to put uh, maybe Tevita Sole in there as your uh, reserve tight head. Um, so you've got lots of options here. Uh, lots of room for uh, rotation. Um, and then, you know, you've got Regan O'Gorman, of course, in the mix as well. Um, that's a pretty good uh, squad, I, I think, uh, for the most part. Again, uh, you look at this back line, I just see a lot of skill there. You've got pace and uh, pace and power uh, on the wings. You've got Mitch Wilson, you know, uh, not the biggest fullback ever, that's for sure, but uh, you cannot question the guy's bravery. He's uh, just fearless in the tackle and in the air, so I think he'll be fine there. Um, you know, you can maybe look at, at this configuration or even with Bastra on the wing and say, well, you know, those guys maybe aren't uh, really kickers, right? But you would have to think that Potras is certainly having played 15. They'll just adjust and drop him instead uh, and, and not worry about dropping um, Balakana or feeling. But, but I mean, you could drop one of these guys. I'm sure uh, Balakana would be okay, you know, uh, just dropping back his coverage, but he's probably not going to be doing too much kicking back. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, and Milan, I just, I think he's an excellent uh, player. He's big. He can offload uh, on the line, runs great lines. Uh, I'm a big fan of his and Vanderbank's tremendous running lines as well. Um, uh, just Lesage, I just think uh, his presence out there, uh, he's just a, uh, the ultimate professional really and an excellent defender as well. Just a top class player. Uh, I, I just don't think you can leave him out of the lineup. Um, um, so yeah, it, it looks good to me. I think this is going to be a very competitive side. I think they've got depth. Um, and, you know, just the one little concern about the line out perhaps. But uh, other than that, they've got good goal kicking uh, in McDonald. Wilson can kick. Poland can kick. Uh, Patros, I don't think he's really been a frontline goal kicker, but he can kick. Um, but, I mean, they'll be fine with, with Wilson kicking. Uh, he, he's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I, I, that good depth at scrum half, competition for spots there, that helps. Tremendous depth uh, at hooker. Uh, front row looks good to me. Good overall squad. I like this uh, team a lot. Now the question is, how quickly can you get all these guys working together again? You know, uh, just uh, it just you have this great season, then you have to rebuild again. That's got to be a little bit frustrating uh, for the Free Jacks. But they brought in so much quality, you know, and, and certainly Scott Matthew and, and Co. Uh, the coaching uh, staff that they have there proved their worth last season. They proved that they can do this quickly. So it seems like they're building a culture there. Um, they've certainly improved their off-field uh, off facilities as well. Uh, I think this is going to be another good year for the Free Jacks. Is it going to be enough to, to bring them a title home? Well, uh, I mean, it's just such hot competition. Uh, I'm putting them in the top three. Def I'm putting them in the playoff race uh, for sure. 
and they've got competition again from the defending champions, New York, and I think uh, New Orleans, though, the improvements they've made is going to elevate them up. So that should be a cracking uh, first week matchup, New Orleans uh, versus New England uh, at the gold mine. I think that's going to be a fantastic match that, you know, week one could have playoff implications when you think about how tight this, this season is going to be. So we're really looking forward to it. New England Free Jacks, MLR 2023. Let me know what you think.